Hello everybody, welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. Changing it after 300 episodes, I think you've got the point now. And this is Wine Library TV, AKA The Thunder Show. Changing it up. You gotta change with the hundreds, Mr. Mott. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start right away with dimes. Why do I have dimes on my table? Well, I only ask you for two cents a day. That's a comment down below which really translates to a dime a week. And you know, did the 300th episode yesterday or the other day, we only had 194 comments below even sometimes the average and I'm just wondering if the Vayner Nation might be taking advantage of me. Not really because obviously you don't owe me a comment but to be very honest with you, I do adore them and read every single one of them. So. If you don't think I do, or you wanna leave your comment in the forums like many of the old school Vaniacs want to, please keep in mind that I am like a flower and flowers need sun and water and nutrients and all that. I need comments. Comments is what will help me get to 300 more like many of you requested. Lack of comments will make this show go tumbling, tumbling, tumbling down and ending. Ending. Today's episode is extremely interesting. I'm very excited about it. I brought out the big ass glass and you know it's going to be a sensational episode. First and foremost, big shout out to Boss Man for giving a lot of the Thundercats that we see on the table. We will continue on our quest for the largest collection of tea cats in America. Also want to give a quick shout out to Dmitry Danikoff who is on YouTube. You know, YouTube, building up a little bit of a following there. I mean, really in Viddler, if, if we were doing a YouTube video, if we were within that, we'd probably be huge there. But want to give a big shout out to all the people that watch on YouTube. Rarely do that, want to do that, have done it. And something else I want to do is give away an iPhone. Uh-huh. I heard the screams. Yep, I hear them. I want to give away an iPhone. I have no idea how. What I'd like to accomplish is getting more people to watch Wine Library TV because of it. So here's the goal. I'd like to get new viewers, kind of like a lurking, calling out the rats as one person said to me, game, maybe a little viral action, but then the winner, the seed, the original Vaniac, kind of gets the iPhone. I don't know, I need your help. I'm running out of ideas. So, in the comments below today, I'm gonna really push this number up today. It gets the ego time, I need the comments. Tell me your idea for the iPhone giveaway. We will be doing that and that's going to be exciting. Now, huge announcement. We have been following the countdown. You can see lack o number. We've been following the countdown down to this Wednesday for almost close to a year, waiting for this huge announcement. I've got an announcement to make about the announcement. I'm pushing it to Thursday. So, the big announcement will be pushed back one day to Thursday and I hope you enjoy that. Let's get into the wines, and today we are focusing on the wines from Puyak, a tremendous, if not the top place within Bordeaux in the world, making three, that's six, three of the five first growths in the world. So we're talking about Lafitte, Latour, and Mouton Rothschild all come from within Puyak. Puyak is arguably the most profound, exciting, exuberant, exceptional, extraordinary area in the world producing wine today. It is highly respected by all serious wine drinkers and I'm very excited and honored to show you three of them today. Four, can't count, weird day. Um, so we're gonna get into those wines in one minute. Let me give you a little backdrop uh, information. Backdrop, bumbling. 300 and I'm finished. Puyak is uh, 2,700 uh, hectares of land where they produce a good amount of Cabernet. Uh, you do see Merlot and Cab Franc, even occasional Petit Verdot. Big shout out to PV uh, coming through on these wines. They, they produce so many of the top wines that people are familiar with, excluding the three first growths. We've got Pichon Lalande, Pichon Barone. It goes really on and on. And, uh, and I'm very excited about this episode. We will uh, definitely get into these wines in one second. Let's start pouring them. But what I really want to do uh, is mention one other thing. Because a, a lot of house cleaning on this Monday. Um, one, the New York Jets did defeat the New York Giants. But to be honest, uh, based on what I saw, the Giants are a little bit of a better football team right now. We've got some offensive line issues. Though Leon Washington is a superstar. Uh, number two, Idaho. You know I went and now the results from the wines. Mott, link it up down below. If you have any interest in what the Idaho uh, Wine Festival results were, we only give out three golds. The links are down below. Very interesting stuff and let's get right into the wines. Reserved de la 
Comtesse 2004 Pouillac. This is Pichon Lalonde's second label, and second labels do very, very well in, uh, in Bordeaux. They're actually very important wines, wines that a lot of people get excited about because you can get them for a lot less. For example, this wine's 88 to uh, 90 points, Robert Parker, 58% Cabernet, 36% Merlot, 6% Cabernet Franc, and it's 30 US dollars. So you've got the predominance of Cabernet, good chunk of Merlot, and the Cab Franc to give it a little bit of that bouquet action. Again, this is the second wine of Pichon Lalande, which is extremely famous um, and is extremely respected and so sought after. And uh, I've, I've been a big fan of Reserve de Comte and I've just been uh, very excited about the overall quality of these wines through the years. So I'm, I'm really ready to jump into this wine. I've not had the 04. 2004 is a very sneaky vintage in Bordeaux. Everybody's talking about 2005. 2003 was rated pretty well. 2004 has a chance to be the last of the Mohicans. The 2006 prices came out very high, hence we didn't do a lot of futures campaigns. Um, 2004 was a very nice, strong vintage in Bordeaux, uh, one that can be drank a little bit younger, and one that uh, the price points are a little bit more fair. So 30 bones, really beautiful, uh, ruby-esque colors, really like the color in this wine. Um, it's quite pretty, let's give it a little bit of a sniffy sniff. This has a very, um, extremely, it's a really quite awkward, far-reaching nose. It's got a, almost like a, a pine cone-esque kind of component to it. I do get a cherry pie um, portion on the nose, which I enjoy quite a bit. But quite tight, I mean 2004 is still young and Besides the pine cone and cherry pie, I'm not getting a whole, whole lot. Let's give it a little bit of a whirl. Very serious on the tack. Um, great tannins on the mid palate. The heat's getting the best of this wine right now, but the fruit is clearly under massive layers of tannins that this wine is bringing to the table. This wine has a lot of age um, possibilities. I see this wine lasting for seven to 15 years easily. Um, it's got extraordinary bright raspberry cherry flavors on the mid palate, and it finishes with a creaminess that's very seductive and sexy. Um, I like this wine. I think it's got guts and it's got glamour. And anytime you can G-square it, I'm on board. This wine is a very good value. For any Cabernet fan, this is a wine that's going to really ticky, tickle your fancy. Um, it's got really rich, explosive fruit, a la some of the Gurgich Hills and the Jordan Cabernets that a lot of people jump on that, in my opinion, sometimes tend to be overpriced. It's got the structure of the Pichon, just not the overall fruit explosion that the big boy, the big brother, gets. Uh, for $30, it's an exceptionally well-made wine. It's got some nice greenness to it as well. Um, and almost like a celery root. It's a good wine. I'm gonna score this wine. I'm gonna score this wine 90 points. I like this wine quite a bit. I, I think this is a tremendous entry into the Pouillac. Uh, I think it brings a good solid amount of thunder. Maybe not all the way, but it's flirting, and I think this is a wine, based on the tannins, based that they're a little bit more bitter than I prefer, but they kind of open up. This wine's been open for well over four hours, decanted, then poured back into the bottle. So we've been doing the right thing with these wines. We do that often with the big boys. I need to mention that more often. We a lot of times decant behind the scenes, pour back into the bottle. So um, I'm, I'm feeling this wine. Uh, I think this is a great entry. This is not an episode where a lot of people who are looking after every dime and nickel are gonna wanna jump on because these wines are expensive. But if you're getting serious about wine or you wanna save a couple bucks for something a little bit more special uh, and exceptional, this is a very good entry into Puyak. I, I think, once again, for 30 bones, this is a very good buy. Uh, it's a wine, wine that I would pair right away with any kind of lamb dish. I'm, I'm thinking about uh, wild mushrooms. 
I could see going really well with this as well. It's got a lot of flexibility. It's a big wine, but I think this is the kind of wine you could pop with burgers. This has got a lot of flexibility with food, and I, I just think it's an exceptionally well-made wine for the money, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Let's move on. Uh, Chateau Lynch Moussas, 2004 Pouillac. Now, this is a, a very interesting winery because a lot of times, this is the wine that I used to recommend quite a bit uh, in the early 90s uh, and mid 90s as an entry level. 80, 88 points Parker, 88 points Spectator, 26 US dollars. Let's throw it up for Eric Coleman. Wonderful little safety for your New York Jets. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Um, nice color, uh, also very similar to the uh, Lalonde, the Reserve uh, Comtesse. Let's uh, give it a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Very interesting nose. Uh, it's actually got a very obvious and distinct flavor on the nose of pencil shavings, which I'm liking quite a bit. Brings me back to school when I would just, you know, have like the Superman or, you know, sharpener and didn't know what to do, you know, because I wasn't paying attention to the teacher, so I had to do something cool. So, definitely has a, a, pencil, a pencil shaving component to it. Uh, a little bit of blackberry coming through as well on this. There's almost a jamminess to this wine, which I like quite a bit. Um, pretty interesting stuff. Let's give it a whirl. Much smoother on the palate than I expected. A, a more approachable um, Pouillac than a Reserve de la Comtesse. Um, this is a predominantly Cabernet-based wine. I don't have the exact blend. Uh, I know they're planting more Cabernet. I, I like the richness of this wine. I do get a soil component, almost like a, a cheap flower bar at Kmart for your mom on Mother's Day, like that soil in there, it's real black. I, I do get that quite a bit in this wine. Uh, there's also a green pepper component coming through. Uh, there is a pastry-esque uh, blueberry component coming through as well in this wine. All mixed together, really predominantly though, driven by earthy, um, dirty tones. That being said, it's an extremely silky wine in the mouthfeel, which is quite different than uh, you know wines that usually tend to be, wow, this is very interesting. I almost wanna say on mouthfeel and approach, it's very Pinot Noir-esque. Now, it doesn't taste anything like a Pinot, but just on the fact of its elegance and the fact that it's earth-driven and earthy, that's a very Pinot-like move. So, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of like those wide receivers in football that are very ballerina-esque. They're far from ballerinas, but you know, that's kind of where I'm going with this analogy. Uh, I like this wine, it's solid. Um, there's almost like a clay, uh, ceramic type taste going on. But ultimately, I can't get over the fact that this wine is really dominated by muddy, not muddy, soily green peppers. And they're really not even that great. Um, and there's a dry, bitter, bitter tannins that I think is gonna turn off a lot of people. I'm gonna actually go below Parker and Spectator on this wine. I'm gonna go 86 points on this wine. I'm gonna give this wine a pass. It's, uh, you know, the Reserve Comtesse is, is a far better option if you wanna get into that entry level price points. Let's move on. This is pretty famous stuff, I'm excited to pop this. Chateau Pichon Baron, uh, 2004, 64 US dollars, 93 points Robert Parker, um, and this wine is 73 hectares, 70% Cabernet, 25% Merlot, 5% Cabernet Franc, now that is the way the vineyard is planted. Once again, I don't have the exact blend on this wine. I was unable to find it. Give it a little bit of a rinse. That was a big rinse. Boy, oh boy. I'm gonna get all those people to email me and complain about my rinses. I disrespect. Uh, speaking of which, if you have a time-sensitive email, I'm falling way behind. I'm getting into thousands a day now, and so uh, please, I had to email a lot of people over the weekend apologizing. They needed something for a party, so please put urgent, 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 or time-sensitive. I still wanna answer all your emails, because that's what I do, but you're gonna need to help me out a little bit, so. Now I'm gonna get that for everything. 
I'm just a glutton. Very dark. This is by far the darkest of the three wines so far. 2004, again, once again, a nice, really solid vintage. Um, let's pour out a little for the homes a little bit. There we go. You know, this is a vintage I have a lot of respect for and I'm really excited about, and this is a winery, a chateau, that I have a lot of respect for, so I'm looking for big things out of this wine. Let's give it a sniff. And it's, I just wish you guys were here. The clear-cut difference of bouquet on this wine compared to the first two wines is so staggering and shocking. It really shows you the difference of premium wine compared to solid wine. This is beautiful on the nose. I mean, this has just a smorgasbord of red and black fruit. This is dark cherries, uh, cassis. This is also black, black blueberries and blackberries. Very dark in its approach. I get a mocha component, a little chocolate action, which I like quite a bit. Subtle creaminess going on in here, almost like a hot chocolate with lots of whipped cream and it all melts down. You know how that changes the component? I get that creamy smell from here. It's pretty, very pretty. Let's give it a whirl. I want to eat this wine. I want to eat it. It's delicious. Wow. Um, huge attack of flavor right off the bat on your palate. It just punches you right in your face. It's almost like Ram Man. Remember him? Doop. It Ram Mans you directly in your palate with a very intense and almost, um, almost dessert-esque jam component. Just imagine all the fruits we talk about with the black and cherry and the red cherries and the strawberries and the blueberries and the cassis and all, just compact in almost like a heat compote. I'll put them all in and just mix them into their jam, putting that directly in your mouth. That's what this wine does. This wine brings tremendous fruit components. However, unlike fruit bombs that get totally out of control, this is not driven by sugar while it's doing that. It's driven more by beautiful vegetal components. So it's like take that beautiful jam of those nine flavors and then throw it into almost like, what's a big vegetable that you could throw it all into, cut out the middle, I don't know. Uh, almost like a, how about an eggplant? Almost like gut an eggplant and put that jam in and then bite it. I'm getting really rounded edges on the outsets of my palate that are more vegetal while the fruit is so intense and the silkiness of this wine, the polish that this wine brings to the palate is quite exceptional. Uh, I'm really feeling this wine. This is a big boy. This is a wine that can last for 15 years easy, but with decanting, a wine that I feel is somewhat approachable now. And this is what I call a double bubble. You can drink it now across the way or drink it over time. The kind of wine that the rollers, the ballers, the guys that I know can afford it, I press them to buy a case of this and drink a different bottle each year and evaluate it a great way, really the way I build my palate, to watch wines evolve, how they evolve, how they change, because this is a wine that's gonna be delicious all 12 vintages that you taste this through. So that being said, when I mean vintages, I mean years. I better not use slang and mix people up. This is an exceptionally good wine. Robert Parker nailed it right in the head. I'm going right up behind him. I'm getting right behind you, Parker, on this one. 93 points on this wine, 64 bucks, worth it. This is a wine to seek out. I'm sure this is gonna be on a lot of restaurant lists because a lot of restaurants are gonna have to buy 2004s to make Bordeaux approachable and affordable on their lists. Seek this wine out. This brings serious thunder and destroys, destroys 90% of the Napa Valley cabs in its price point. It's this beautiful wine. There's a, there's a sincerity to this wine. I, I don't know how to put it, but it's it just, it's it's real. I like it, I like it a lot. I like it, I love it. 2001 vintage, the other vintage that reminds me a lot of 2004. Again, completely overshadowed by the 2000 vintage, but the wines were good and well-priced, and here's a perfect example. This is the, it's like, Da you. This is the Pichon Lalande 2001. 
75 US dollars, 93 points Robert Parker. This wine is exactly 50% Cabernet, 36% Merlot, and 14, 14% Petit Verdot. And you know how much I love PV, so I'm awfully excited about this wine. And here we go. I mean, there's just something about Pichon on the nose, and there's something about Pichon when it gets a couple years in aging, and this is just awesome. This has a meaty, fleshy component to it, so there's definitely almost like a, first thing that comes to my mind is boar's head. You know, it's got a ham-esque kind of nose, then imagine some V8 juice being poured on that, throw a little Tabasco sauce, I'm not talking Bloody Mary, but I might be talking a little bloody ham. And this is really, really exciting for me. I love these kind of aromatically awkward, different, exciting kind of noses. There's some really pretty licorice underlining flavors coming through on this nose as well. Boy, this is totally different, just totally different. Whereas all three other nose wines were really dominated by fruit. That one had some vegetal out, out, outer layers. Out, out, outer layers. This wine is completely dominated by a meal type nose. This really t smells like your main course. Let's give it a whirl. After I give it one last sniff. Take a plum, wrap bacon around it, put it in the microwave, and let it go for five minutes. Let the plum, plum explode. Will it explode, Mott? Probably would. Let the plum explode, maybe not. Take it out with a rubber glove because you don't want to burn your hand. Slap on some serious black pepper, take a couple of pieces of asparagus, and bite it. That's what this wine tastes like. And let me tell you something, me likey. This wine brings beautiful, exotic, fresh plum, and a heavenly, let's go with a, a heavenly bacon, Nyman Ranch bacon component to this wine. This is bacon and plum on your mouth all day long, attacking, not being bashful, and taking no prisoners. This is old school, old world. If you're new world love, if you love the fruit bombs, you, this time, are gonna have to leave the room. This is my kind of wine. This is food wine. This is, put me in a blind tasting. I know this is a little bit older. It's not really old, but a little older Bordeaux. Uh, it's really beautiful. Petit Bordeaux is singing on this wine, which makes me very happy. Where you get into Petit Bordeaux is kind of in that, um, kind of in that like dark plum-esque aspect on the, on the wine, no question. If you drink this wine, pay attention to how on the initial attack, it goes with like a real fruit, like you really get that plum immediately, but within like a second, it goes very vegetal and very bacon on you. I love bacon, I love plums, I love asparagus, I love everything about this wine. This is real Bordeaux. Um, whereas the Pichon is really going to fascinate and appease most people, because it's got a little New World love to it with the fruit. This is out and out Bordeaux. You know, bring out the hot stew, pour me a couple glasses of this, let me put on the game while it's snowing outside. Mwah! Life is good, especially if everybody you care about is healthy at that point. That is exactly what wine's about. I am dying, dying to find the people that can afford to buy both of these bottles of wine, bring your peeps over, pop them both, and experience Bordeaux from premium producers from the same general area different years that taste completely, completely different. For a different reason, I'm gonna score this wine a little higher. This is more up my alley. I'm going 94 plus on this wine because I'm feeling it and I'm loving it. This wine will last for 10 to 20 years and I promise you, will match up to any heavy steak, meat, wild game, boar, whatever the heck you want that's manly, that's what you should eat with this wine because this wine is bringing serious 
Thunder. Hell yeah. This point is kicking. Not spitting, my friend. What else? Gotta do an episode on labels. Way too many of you are admitting to me that you buy wine um, by looking at the labels in the store. We've gotta change that. We've gotta come up with like five golden rules while shopping in a wine shop. Let's do that, Ma. We've gotta do that. Um, question of the day. A lot of you did this for episode 300 personally for me. I liked it. Now I want all of you to do it. Remember, I need fuel. I'm gonna run now. Tell me a funny, interesting, something that makes it interesting. Wine Library TV story. A lot of people were telling me about people that don't get it. Like they're like, who is that idiot? Other people telling me they met in a park in Wisconsin. Somebody was wearing the Wine Library TV t-shirt. Two Vaniacs at a park in Wisconsin. I love that. Give me a little story, something cool that involves Wine Library TV. You're telling somebody, somebody telling you about it, but you've been watching a heck of a lot longer than them. Mix it up, make sure it's true. Because you, with a little bit of me, yes, we are changing the wine world.